Herbalife, I reckon they have a pretty big scary legal team, and so this video is for entertainment purposes only. I don't know what I'm talking about. Everything I say is fabrication, and in fact, I am completely insane. So Herbalife, please don't hurt me. It kind of feels redundant to make this video at this point because if you've heard of Herbalife, you probably have a strong opinion one way or another. And I'm just here to talk you through my experience at their event. I went to their event and to look at it from a nutritional standpoint. I also think you can make progress doing any diet and training program, taking any supplement, but I'm here to say that you'll be able to make better progress without it. And I'm going to explain why. So I'm going to cover their nutritional principles my experience at their event, what multi-level marketing schemes are, the product and nutritional information, the taste, and the alleged contaminants as well. So let's begin with the nutritional principles. This is straight off their website. So we've got healthy breakfast, small frequent meals, nutritious snacks, regular hydration, essential nutrients, and vitamins and minerals. The last three I can agree with. Hydration, nutrients, vitamins. I mean, it's pretty hard to say, like, no, those are bad things. First, the idea of healthy breakfast and kickstarting the metabolism, this is something that's been put to bed multiple times. As with a lot of nutritional myths, it was given a big old boost by industry to get that belief going. And it's turned into something that's become part of common parlance. Like, how often do you hear someone say, oh, breakfast, most important meal of the day? So it's really effective, the marketing campaign that they've done for that. And Herbalife are just piggybacking off that. Next, the idea of small, frequent meals. There's an old saying, little pickers get bigger knickers. I only just heard that the other day from a patient and I thought it was great. But this is actually something that holds true. The data on satiety and hunger shows that the sweet spot is around three meals a day. If you go six meals or eight meals a day, like some people will tell you to do, because of claims about regulating blood sugar or whatever else, the problem is, let's say you've got 2,000 calories. To split that into eight meals, that's like 220, 240 calories per meal, it's barely anything. It's a tickle of food, and you're not going to be satisfied from it. So that's what's going to cause you to be more likely to overeat because you're always just teasing yourself with a little bit of food. Tip it the other way and you have one 2000 calorie meal in the morning, you've then got quite a long period between meals where you're not eating anything. So both extremes are gonna make you quite hungry. And generally people tend to eat the fewest calories at around three meals. You might find it's four or two, but three is kind of the base camp. So in line with that, the thing about nutritious snacks, it's just more food. And at the end of the day, most Herbalife customers are not looking for weight gain. They're looking for some kind of magic bullet weight loss method. And so just adding in more calories, it doesn't make sense, both intuitively and what the data says about satiety. So the event, I actually went to their event a few years ago after being encouraged to by one of the resellers. And I honestly went in with a totally open mind. Unfortunately, when I got there, I just wanted to be sick the entire time. And for Herbalife's legal team, that was because of totally unrelated, just acute paroxysms of nausea and nothing to do with the product. They managed to really effectively press every one of my nutritional buttons. And I can just summarize it as confidently wrong. In fact, the stuff that was being said wasn't even as slick as the official facing kind of careful use of undefinable terms, but it was just total shooting from the hip. And I can only put it down to the leader of the talk setting up camp at the top of Mount Stupid. Something that's really interesting is that the more that you learn about something, the less you feel like you know about it, but your bullshit filter becomes extremely sensitive. And it's the same as if you see a news article about something that you have specialist knowledge in, and you're like, this is total rubbish. Like, what kind of journalism is this? And then the, the penny drops and you're like, oh my God all news articles about topics that are outside of my area of expertise are probably just as badly reported. So that was my experience anyway. It didn't fill me with confidence about the veracity of the claims or about the quality of the product. But I did try the product, and I'll get onto that in a second. But first, what is a multi-level marketing scheme? Well, it's not a pyramid scheme. It just looks, behaves, and acts like a pyramid scheme, which is illegal, but, but it's not one. 
It's not. It's basically a commission-only workforce where the guy at the top is recruiting people to sell the product to people who sell the product to people who sell the product to people who buy the product. And according to a report of 350 multi-level marketing schemes, 99% of the participants lost money. Now, I don't actually have a problem with that in itself because retail traders, 95% of them lose money within 90 days or something. People who start new diets, people who start training programs, a lot of them fail. And that's nothing to do with the system. That's just because human nature is to try something, reinvent ourselves and new year, new me and turn over a new leaf and all that stuff. And people run out of momentum. They're not very good at sticking to the hard stuff and selling is hard. So I've not got a problem with that in itself. It's important to note that with Herbalife, the product is not the supplements product is the business opportunity. You could argue that the supplements are kind of the afterthought. As a business, they've absolutely smashed it. They've got great sales training. They have a target audience of nutritionally ignorant people who want to fix years of poor habits with a single supplement. They've got the first mover advantage and they have loads of cash to throw at this as well. And, and as I say, the way that the supplements are marketed is very careful use of the words wellness and cellular nutrition as opposed to nutrition that doesn't involve cells um, and at the end of the day it's a business and so it does it's designed to make the people at the top of the business richer but in terms of you making money as a multi-level marketing reseller I think unless you're very high up in the Herbalife corporate chain then I wouldn't bother there's far easier ways to make money online and I, I have a video on the best ways to do that much more predictably which will be somewhere up here Let's get on to the product. We have two core products under Herbalife. There's many others, but the core ones are the Cell Activator and the Herbalife Drink. So the Cell Activator, I mean, it might be ringing alarm bells already from the name. And with the choice of herbs that are in this Cell Activator, I can see their rationale. But let's just go through the ingredients here. So in the Cell Activator, we have ALA, 150 milligrams. Standard dose is 300 to 600 milligrams. Rhodiola rosea, it's a herb that's often used to combat stress and fatigue. In the data, the lowest significant dose to have an effect is 50 milligrams. Herbalife cell activator has 10 milligrams. Resveratrol, used as an anti-estrogen, antioxidant, 5 to 10 milligrams is the lowest dose to have an effect in the data. Herbalife has 0.9 milligrams. You're seeing a trend here. Pine bark. In the data, 40 to 60 milligrams is used as the minimum, but usual doses are 100 to 120 milligrams. Herbalife uses 2 milligrams. Shiitake mushrooms. They're safe, but there's insufficient data in humans to show that they're effective for anything. It maybe improves lipid profile in rats at a high dose, and there are possibly immune modulating effects at 10 grams a day. Herbalife has 15 milligrams. Finally, we have pomegranate rind extract. The antioxidant effects start at 800 milligrams. Herbalife has 11 milligrams. Now, I'm just saying there is a common practice in the supplement industry to just put subtherapeutic doses of things on the label so that you can claim, oh, well, it's got this in. And banking on the fact that not many people are going to look at what is the minimum effective dose of this thing to elicit the effect that I'm looking for. So... Maybe just a lesson whenever you buy any supplement, look at the data, examine.com is a fantastic resource for this, and just check how much do I need and what's the most cost-effective way to get this. So bear that in mind next time you want to activate your cells. And if anyone knows what activating your cells means, please let me know in the comments below because I haven't got a Scooby. Next we have the drink. So as you can see, primarily it's soy protein and fructose. I'm gonna keep quiet about soy, because people on YouTube comments get very cross about my personal choice not to drink soy. I personally have some problems with it that if you want to find out more, have a look at my Huel review here. Fructose is more likely to be stored as fat because of the limited pathways of its storage. And the rest of the ingredients, you can have a look for yourself, but none of these I'm particularly excited about. So the taste. It was a few years ago when I tasted Herbalife supplements and protein bars and 
food technology has come on a long way, so it may be that they taste a lot better now. But at the time, I didn't like it. Very sweet, very artificial kind of flavouring. Um, but it may well have changed now. I'm not going to go buy more to check. If you really want to know how it tastes, then knock yourself out. But there are my thoughts on it. Finally, the alleged contaminants. Now, the company was fined $200 million a few years ago, and it was ordered to restructure its business and issue refunds to 350,000 distributors, all around a alleged liver toxicity scandal. 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 Let's call it a scandal. There have been over 50 reports of alleged liver toxicity attributed to Herbalife products, allegedly containing bacterial DNA and psychoactive compounds. So you can see the full report in the link below. It's a case report, circumstantial evidence only, and I don't think this necessarily means the company is evil or anything. They have a lot of charitable efforts, but bear that in mind. This isn't exclusive to Herbalife. With many supplements, they will contain contaminants, and it's something to watch out for, particularly if you're training in a drug-tested sport. There would be nothing worse than failing a drugs test for a drug that you didn't even mean to take. At least if you're going to take a drug, you want to have some performance-enhancing benefit from it, rather than just accidentally ingesting it because it was in your protein shake. So the conclusion, to be honest, it's not a product for me. It's not a product I would ever recommend my clients to take. I think their business model is great if you happen to be at the very top of the chain in Herbalife, but it's a no from me. And if you want to be really upset about it and send me some abuse in the comments, please do. I feel like this is one of the polarizing fitness topics that people have already formed their opinion on well before seeing any kind of data, and anything they see subsequent to that just reinforces their pre-existing biases. So there's my thoughts on it. I'll include some links in the description below if you want to read more about it, and please send me your abuse. Finally, before you go, if you're thinking, hmm, I would like to know more about how to gain muscle and lose fat in the most efficient way possible, well, you are in luck by stumbling upon this channel. Start with having a look at this playlist.